Hey everybody, welcome back to our channel. I am shooting this intro in my driveway. I am now back home. I went uptown because I wanted to show you a few locations uptown that are historic, very, very old buildings that have ghost stories attached to them. But there, it's been a few years since I've lived in Charlotte and there is a lot of construction and street closures, even some one-way streets that are closed, um, which was making it very hard for me to actually get around uptown. I probably would have been better off if I tried to do it on foot, but I could not find anywhere to park the car that wasn't expensive and there were jackhammers and just a lot of construction, noise and debris and it was making kind of a lot of traffic as well because people were trying to figure out how to drive through all of it. So I did the best I could to get the footage that I could and I'm going to tell you these ghost stories but I just going to want to apologize right here out of the gate that I'm going to have to use the aid of some pictures online. I can't use all my own footage. Um, there was just no safe way for me to get it uptown. There's a lot going on in Charlotte these days. The city is booming and growing. But uh, let's tell some ghost stories. I think you might enjoy these. Even though the footage from my own camera is limited, I'll use photos where I have to. And everything that I use will be linked down below in the description box. We are starting off here with the McGlowan Theater. But guys, there was just so much construction going on around it and absolutely nowhere for me to park the car and get out. So we're just going to have to do a super fast drive-by and then I'll finish the story in pictures. This theater was originally built in the late 1800s as the First Baptist Church of Charlotte and it was a place of worship for over 70 years before being transformed into the theater that it is today and named after the legendary jazz pianist Loomis McGlowan. It has gained a reputation for being haunted. Some people even call it the Bermuda Triangle of Charlotte. Numerous people have reported seeing ghosts inside this old church, and many performers and stage crew have described unearthly experiences within the auditorium. People have mentioned hearing old church hymns being sung by a young voice, possibly a child's voice, but only when the theater is empty. A former security guard of the property claimed that objects would at times move around on the stage and sometimes she could hear the creepy laughter of unseen children in various places around the inside of the building. Sometimes she saw soda cans mysteriously fall down from the rafters as security staff walked across the stage. Sometimes when employees were down in the basement, they could hear someone walking around upstairs even when they knew they were alone in the building. This is such a beautiful old building. I truly hope all this construction in Charlotte will not damage the theater and perhaps it will reopen for performances one day soon. Next, we are looking at the Tryon House, which is one of the most historic apartment buildings in Charlotte. It was built in 1918 and it served as a fashionable yet economical residential location for single people, young married couples, and even small families. The building received an expansion project in 1926 when a larger second edition was added to the back, and today it stretches an entire city block. This building used to be known as the Guthrie Apartments, and it was a scene of one of the worst disasters in Charlotte's history. In the early morning hours of March 13, 1941, a massive fire caused by a boiler explosion in the basement swept through the three-story building. According to the city's fire department chief at the time, the flames from the boiler grew so hot that they melted two gas meters nearby, which reacted like giant torches, sending flames up the elevator shafts from the basement to the top floor. Six people died in the fire, and nine more were seriously injured. The building remains reportedly haunted to this day. A former manager of the building in the 1990s claims that the building still has some, quote, residual energy floating around. He says that almost everyone who he has met who's lived in the building has some kind of ghost or paranormal story to share. One person claimed they could hear someone crying and throwing themselves against the wall in the next door apartment when that unit was actually empty and no one lived there. Another tenant claimed people were banging on his door at all hours of the night, but when he would check the hallways, no one was out there. One woman even claimed that it looked like the walls of her apartment had blood running down them. She left the building within a month of moving in. One of the residents claimed that the hazy figure of a woman would come and stand at the foot of his bed every night and stare at the artwork on his walls. 
Another resident reported that her service animal barks at the walls for no apparent reason. Many other people have reported constantly feeling like they are being watched. I've often noticed this beautiful hotel when driving or walking down Tryon Street, but never really stopped to appreciate it like we're going to do today. This 10-story luxury hotel was constructed as Mayfair Manor in 1929, just before the Great Depression, and was one of the tallest buildings in the city at the time. It has accommodated many famous guests over the years, including Elvis Presley and Paul McCartney. During the Great Depression, a high number of suicides occurred here, with individuals jumping from its upper floor, including some of the hotel's permanent guests who made up half of the occupancy. After changing ownership several times, the building underwent a $6 million restoration project in 1987 that resulted in the opening of the new Dunhill Hotel. During the redevelopment process in February of 1988, a construction laborer found a human skeleton in several pieces lying at the bottom of an old elevator shaft. Forensics at the time were able to determine that the bones belonged to an elderly Caucasian man, about 5 foot 8 inches tall, who likely walked with a limp. The mystery of whose bones they were has never been solved, and the crew workers gave them the name Dusty. It is believed that the spirit of Dusty continues haunting this hotel to this day. Hotel staff have encountered a variety of chilling, unexplainable activity that they attribute to Dusty, including chairs that move around on their own, shampoo bottles being rearranged, and blinds opening and closing all by themselves. Some guests have reported the uneasy feeling of someone pulling on them by the ankles, and others have said that they feel unexplained shivers that begin at their spines and travel all the way over their skulls. Still others have reported that they have seen unsightly figures at the foots of their beds. Room 906 is particularly known for its otherworldly activity. Dusty is seemingly right at home in 906 and is known to frequently turn lights and appliances on and off, especially in the middle of the night when guests are trying to sleep in 906. Some people have reported hearing a spectral finger tapping on the nightstand at precisely 3 o'clock in the morning. Other figures haunt the hotel also, as guests have reported hearing a woman's laughter coming from the downstairs lobby when it was empty, and some have seen a woman dressed in white disappearing and reappearing in the banquet halls at night. I've linked paranormal investigators from the Hex Files podcast who recently caught a voice saying hello in a Facebook Live video. This is the re Pub in Uptown Charlotte, which is now an Irish restaurant and bar that I've been to before. The food is great. This building has a rich history as it has been used for various things, including a textile factory, a bank, and a pharmacy over the years. The current pub owners have put great effort into creating as authentic an Irish bar as possible, including importing a Victorian bar that was restored from officers' barracks in Dublin, and authentic furniture and artifacts that were salvaged from old pubs in Ireland. One of these days, we're going to have to take the vlog out to dinner at Rira. However, a strong drink isn't the only type of spirit you might encounter inside Rira. This building is also said to be haunted today, and opinions vary on whether or not the building was haunted before it was converted into an Irish pub, or if these spirits are entities that came over from Ireland with the furniture and furnishings. Several staff members have reported various ghostly experiences. Some have heard the distinct sounds of sewing machines operating in the basement. Others have reported seeing the ghostly presence of a little girl with blue eyes and curls wearing white gloves and a Victorian style dress. She is believed to be responsible for repeatedly scratching letters of the alphabet with chalk on the brick wall above an alcove just inside the front door where the host stands. Despite efforts to remove or cover the letters, they continue to reappear. Some people have said that they can hear the little girl practicing her ABCs. Some patrons have reported feeling inexplicably cold in certain areas around the bar and seeing ghostly figures of men in period clothing wandering in and out. A man with a handlebar mustache is frequently seen in the upstairs bar, but disappears if anyone speaks to him. Beer taps have been observed turning on and off all by themselves. 
All of these ghostly activities are considered peaceful and typically the ghosts only reveal themselves to staff as to not frighten off customers. All right, guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video. This city is just exploding. People are moving in here by the hundreds, thousands, and it's really exciting to see because so many new places are popping up all around town. Um, Charlotte is usually not a city known for preserving its history and its historical buildings. If they can put a condo or a high rise somewhere, <laughs> that history is donezo. So I was hoping to get at least a little glimpse of some of these places. And fortunately, there are plenty of photos online. I really enjoyed learning a little bit more about some Charlotte history. I'm getting off here now. I'll see you another day in another adventure. Bye, everybody.